Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started. I just want to remind everyone that this will be recorded. Um, we will be sharing this with businesses that were not able to join um, and you can go back and review this will be on our website, um, watertowny.com. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today, Wednesday, April 8th. This is Kylie Peck from the Greater Watertown North Country Chamber of Commerce. Today, we will be learning about funding options available to businesses at the federal and local levels. And as a reminder, uh, we will be recording this and sharing on our website and social media in case you wanna go back and listen to this again. Uh, our website is watertowny.com. And we do have a link right on our homepage that will take you directly to our COVID-19 resource page where you can find this recording um, and a, a plethora of other information uh, with resources regarding the COVID-19 pandemic, um, as well as funding options, uh, links directly to the SBA and NCA programs that we will be learning about today. If you have any questions, please let us know. I would like to remind everyone, uh, after our guest speakers are done sharing information about the programs, we will accept questions through the Zoom chat function. Uh, you can type those right in there and send them over, um, and we will review those and get as many questions answered as we can. So joining us today, we have Michelle Capone from the Development Authority of the North Country and the North Country <laughs> Alliance. Dan Rickman, the Deputy District Director of the U.S. Small Business Administration. And we do have two guests joining us, um, Elizabeth, La Elizabeth Lonergan, who is the Regional Director of the New York State Small Business Development Center, who provides a tremendous resource right here locally, uh, local people that we can talk to and get our uh, questions answered. And then we have Lori Podvin, uh, CPA, from Bowers and Company um, in the event that there are questions at the end that are geared toward accounting practices, she will be available to take those questions. So before we get started with our main presentation, I would like to thank and welcome Congresswoman Elise Stefanik, who has joined us today to provide a federal update on the status of the COVID-19 pandemic. Congresswoman? Thank you so much, Kaylee, Kylie, sorry, and thank you to the Greater Watertown North Country Chamber of Commerce. I also want to um, thank our SBA partners, SBDC, as well as the Development Authority of the North Country and all of our accountants, including Lori, for all their hard work at this time. Um, as this uh, organization and all the listeners are aware, Congress funded the Small Business Administration Paycheck Protection Program, which became available on Friday. And we've had numerous calls with Chambers of Commerce, as well as our local financial institutions, our lenders, our community banks, our credit unions, to triage their questions, of which there are many. Uh, additionally, we are working with the Department of Treasury to continually update the guidance uh, as to the implementation of this program. So I wanted to urge all of the listeners and lenders who are on this call, as you see issues come up, for example, there was a lack of clarity identified on Friday for eligibility for seasonal businesses. My office was able to get in touch with Treasury, help them write the language, turn that into guidance that was updated on the Treasury website and the Small Business Administration website. So we are here to work with you. Thanks again to the, thank you to Kylie from the Greater Watertown North Country Chamber for hosting this call today. Thanks. Thanks so much, Congresswoman Stefanik. Um, it's such great information. It's wonderful to know that you're working on behalf of the North Country um, in this really challenging time. So thank you. Um, so before we get started, I do want to remind everyone again, for those that are still continuing to join, we are recording this session. Um, it is Wednesday, April 8th, and we have continuous information coming out. So I just want to make sure we're noting the date in this recording so people can pay attention to that when they are re-listening to the information or listening for the first time. We will be sharing this information. Um, once it's up on our website, feel free to share it with anyone that you know would be interested or um, could gain information from watching this session. Uh, so thank you again to those who have joined us. Thank you to our guest speakers. And I would like to introduce Michelle Capone from the Development Authority of the North Country. 
Thank you, Kylie, for this invitation today. And I'd also like to, uh, again, thank the Congresswoman for all of her support for our small businesses here in the North Country. It is very much appreciated what you are doing for us in Washington. Um, again, I am the uh, Director of Regional Development, Development Authority of the North Country. And the Development Authority itself, I work in the business and housing programs at the Development Authority. Um, as you may be aware, we also own and operate water and sewer infrastructure across the North Country, the regional landfill, um, telecommunications infrastructure. And again, I work in the business and housing program. Um, we have a wide variety of programs available for small businesses across the not only three county, but seven county North Country region. Um, most recently, what we did for our, our business, lend, our, our business um, borrowers, um, if you have a loan through the Development Authority, we've been offering three months of no principal or interest payments for April, May, and June. The interest will not accrue to the loan, and the principal would just be added on to the end of the loan. So if there's anybody on the phone that is a current borrower with the Development Authority, feel free to contact me, um, and I will get you the paperwork in order to, um, to defer those payments. Um, the Development Authority also administers several different loan programs, and one of those loan programs that we administer is the North Country Alliance. And the North Country Alliance is comprised of economic development organizations, businesses, healthcare institutions, educational institutions, utilities, and other organizations across the seven county North Country region. And that region includes Jefferson, Lewis, St. Lawrence, Clinton, Essex, Franklin, and Hamilton counties. And one of the first things we did when this happened was um, identify some of our funds that we could use to create an emergency business relief program. Um, and what we did was uh, create a program. It's, there's two tiers of funding. Um, there's a maximum of $25,000 that you can borrow. Um, if you have over 20 full-time equivalent employees, you can get up to $25,000. If you have under 20 full-time equivalent employees, you can get up to $10,000. And what we mean by a full-time equivalent employee, and hopefully I'll make this simple for you, is if you have 10 part-time employees, you divide that by two, that equals five, what we consider full-time employees. You then add your full-time employees. So for example, you have 10 part-time people divided by two, that gives you five. You add your other five full-time people to come up with a total of 10 full-time equivalent employees. And that's on the application, we can help you with that so that you can better understand what you're eligible for. Again, this is a loan program. It's up to five years um, repayment term, 5% interest. However, the first three months, there's no principal or interest payments due. The interest does not accrue. Um, then it's interest only for the next six months. And then after that, it's principal and interest payments to amortize the loan over the remaining 51 months. Just looking at the um, criteria for the program, personal guarantees or corporate guarantees, um, we may request additional collateral um, to secure the loan. For-profit and not-for-profit entities are eligible for the program. You have to have um, under 100 full-time equivalent employees. Um, ineligible businesses, because we're using state funds, there is a few ineligible businesses. Those are newspapers, broadcasting, media, healthcare, civic and community centers, libraries, and farms. However, agribusinesses are eligible. So there would not be a prepayment penalty. All fees would be waived for this. Um, you do have to have a minimum credit score of 620, and you'd need to be a, an existing business. Startup businesses are not eligible. However, um, you must be able to provide, you know, at least your last year's tax return or, or the previous two years tax return. So we're hoping that this program is very responsive and reflects, re responsive to your needs. Um, last week was the first week that we reviewed applications. We reviewed four applications. All four were funded. And I plan on cutting the checks for those borrowers this Friday. So it's a, it's a two-week turnaround time. And we hope to can be able to continue that. We're accepting applications on a rolling basis uh, as funds are available. We have about $750,000 available to us to be able to, to put out there. Um, 
Again, this information will be available on the Chamber's website. It's also available on the North Country Alliance's website and on the Development Authority's website. Um, another item that I would just like to mention is understanding that this is a time of flux for our, the, your business. Um, as you begin to plan for the future, please take some time to look at all of our existing public loan programs. Um, I know at this point in time we talk a lot about emergency programs, but as you start coming out of this and start looking to the future, um, there are a lot of public loan programs available to you that you may not have been aware of even before this crisis occurred. I, I spoke with Kylie at the Chamber and we're going to provide links to all of those resources. Uh, it may, may be a good time to just take a look at those so that you can prepare yourself for what might be needed in the case that you might want to make an application for future long-term funding um, as you come out of this crisis. And again, the public lenders, we partner together often, not only amongst our other public lenders, but also with the banks. So we work very closely together. And um, we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have on our program um, as you uh, go through this, this process. So with that, I will turn it back over to Kylie. Thanks so much, for Michelle, for that information. Um, as Michelle mentioned, we do have a link to the NCA funding up on our website currently, watertowny.com, and we will continue to add resources to that page. Um, right under the, uh, the PPP section, uh, there are other funding opportunities available there and with the logos of the organizations offering those funding opportunities. Uh, so thanks again, Michelle. Um, if you have any questions for Michelle, uh, type those into the group chat and we will get to those later on in the program. And I would now like to invite Daniel Rickman uh, from the SBA to discuss the programs available, um, including the Economic Injury Development Loan and also the Paycheck Protection Program. Dan? Hi, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks, uh, Kylie and team, for uh, putting this together. Um, so the, um, of course, Small Business Administration, uh, we actually have several um, um, relief efforts in place as a function of the COVID-19 disaster, starting with the economic injury disaster loans that uh, Kylie mentioned. Um, those have been available for businesses in New York State to apply for since March 19th. Um, that program was expanded and enhanced by the CARES Act uh, a couple, just under a couple of weeks ago um, to include an advanced component. So we've got two pieces to the economic injury disaster loan that will talk about the loan itself, as well as the economic injury disaster loan advance, which is a forgivable advance. Um, we also have the Paycheck Protection Program loan, which uh, is also uh, uh, forgivable in part depending on your, the business's ability to maintain employment um, with the loan. Um, and for all current uh, SBA borrowers, whether you have uh, 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 a working capital loan with a bank or line of credit or mortgage, um, on our various programs, all of our conventional SBA loan programs, um, part of the CARES Act was to provide debt relief for the next six months for those, uh, for those loans, meaning SBA is going to be making the principal and interest payments um, for the next six months on all of your existing SBA debts. So those are probably the, the, three, the three big ones that um, I think are designed to provide um, the quickest relief for small businesses. Um, so before we launch into PPP, a little bit more about the economic injury disaster loans, um, and in particular the advance. Um, that is a direct loan from the Small Business Administration, and you can visit our website at www.sba.gov to um, um, initiate and submit a very streamlined application. Um, there may be folks on the line who, who uh, uh, started application a few weeks ago prior to the CARES Act. If you go back in there, you'll find that the new application is very streamlined. It's designed to be completed in a single setting. Um, and with that, that includes an option for um, accepting um, an advance uh, from SBA an economic injury disaster loan advance, um, which can be up to $10,000, depending on uh, how many employees you have. Um, 
the advance, once you uh, submit the application, um, that puts you in the processing queue and um, the disbursements should happen within a few days after the application has been processed and accepted. Um, that advance is forgivable whether you choose to accept uh, ultimately an economic injury disaster loan or not. So um, it is kind of a separate thing is probably the best way to think about it. Now, the economic injury disaster loan is uh, a loan that'll be available for, uh, it's essentially for covering working capital. You know, your operating expenses for your business um, over the next six months or so um, for businesses that have been harmed by uh, the current disaster, which, you know, um, it is the assumption that all businesses have been essentially harmed by this disaster right now. Um, the term for that loan is 30 years uh, at 3.75% interest, and SBA has implemented an automatic 12-month deferral uh, for all economic injury disaster loans and all the payments. So it's designed to be very, very flexible um, working capital for your business, um, and hopefully, you know, with a 12-month deferral, um, it won't negatively impact your cash flow in the near, in the near future. So again, those are available at sba.gov. Um, you can make applications directly there. The Paycheck Protection Program, which launched just this past Friday, um, falls under SBA's um, 7A Guaranteed Loan Program, which means it's uh, a loan that we are able to guarantee in partnership with the bank. So um, banks are the source. It's who you uh, uh, should go to uh, to make a PPP, uh, as we're calling it, loan application. And uh, there, every any any SBA participating lender uh, prior to you know the, prior to last week was automatically is automatically able to make those. PPP loans. So, you know, the, the simplest thing to do is call up your bank and, and um, see if they're an SBA participating lender. You can also go to our website, www.sba.gov, and use a handy search tool on the PPP page uh, to, there's a link to it on the PPP page to find, just by zip code, the nearest SBA um, participating PPP lender. Since the, um, uh, the program launched, SBA has been uh, 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 accepting applications for new uh, uh, PPP lenders, and those are being added rapidly, and they're going to be available on that search tool as well as we continue to add them. Okay, uh, so even you know credit unions, FDIC insured institutions, um, some fintech companies um, are they are eligible to apply to be a PPP lender. Um, and that uh, that process is in place, so we would expect that to ramp up very quickly. So, how does the loan work? Well, um, essentially, you know, the idea behind the loan is you know, kind of like what it sounds like. It's designed. It's the Paycheck Protection Program. It's designed to um, give business um, funds they need to either maintain their employees that are on payroll right now. Or if business has been forced to lay off due to lack of revenues, their employees, um, since the disaster went into place, rehire those employees. So the um, uh, the purpose or the the way to the way the loan works is based on your um, uh, 12 months prior to the disaster, February 15th. Uh, we're going to look at your average annual or uh, your average monthly payroll over that time. Uh, to come up with, you know, your headcount for employees, as well as to come up with the amount that you can request for the PPP loan. Um, so it's based on the number of employees you had pre-disaster, and uh, you can request up to 2.5 times the average monthly payroll over the prior 12 months. Or, you know, if, if it's easier for you to look at the prior calendar year, you know, look at your uh, 940 reports uh, to the IRS, for example, you can use that information as well equally acceptable. Um, and that determines what the loan request is, including benefits, uh, uh, health benefits, um, um, retirement plan benefits, things of that nature, your normal payroll costs. Okay. The only thing it doesn't include is your payroll, employer payroll taxes. Um, that, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a tax e pay. Uh, so you're, the employer portion of the FICA um, is not included in that calculation. Um, additionally, uh, what can be included in the loan request is your 
um, any uh, mortgage interest on a mortgage that you had in place prior to February 15th, same with rent, if you had a lease agreement in place prior to February 15th, as well as your utilities for any utility service agreements you had in place prior to February 15th. Um, so that's kind of the quick, you know, the quick uh, uh, high overview of how you calculate, you know, what you can ask for. Uh, but the big, the big, uh, I think the big part of the, of, of the program is that a portion, uh, including potentially 100% of that uh, loan amount can be forgiven, okay, depending on your ability to uh, maintain your pre-disaster uh, headcount um, over the eight weeks the, after you get the loan, okay. Um, meaning, you know, in that scenario, if you had 10 employees av on average last year and you can keep that average throughout the eight weeks, um, what 100% of the loan can be forgiven. There are a couple of provisos. 75% um, of the forgiveness amount must go to payroll costs. So, you know, depending on your specific circumstances, that's something to kind of keep in mind. And I'm sure your CPA uh, can, will be happy to, you know, help you calculate that. Um, and that's, that's kind of the bottom line, you know, if circumstances result in a lesser amount being forgiven, um, you know, say, you know, you get to seven employees. Well, that means 70% of the total loan amount will be forgiven, um, after the eight weeks, any amount that is not forgiven, um, simply converts into a, uh, a two year term of loan at 1% interest, okay? And if you haven't used those funds to uh, make payroll, you can certainly just pay off the balance and not have that um, um, sitting on your books. Um, there are no prepayment pre penalties with SBA loans. Um, so I, you know, there's, I'm certainly get a lot of, we're, we're, there might be some questions as we, as we go through this. Um, I'll stop here for now and, 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 and turn it back over to Kylie to, uh, um, for the rest of the presentation. Thanks so much, Dan. Um, and we are getting questions again. If you have questions, please submit those through the group chat. Uh, but at this time, I would like to ask Liz Lonergan uh, from the New York State Small Business Development Center if she would like to share kind of their role in uh, navigating through this system. Sure, thanks, Kylie. So the SBDC, uh, we have offices in Watertown at SUNY Jefferson and in Oswego at Oswego State University. And we have uh, business advisors who are available to help. We can help you navigate uh, and talk to you about details of the plans that Dan just outlined, um, kind of help you to see which is a better fit for you. Um, we can also point you in the direction of the IDA programs that Michelle Capone outlined earlier, um, not only in the North Country, but in other parts uh, of the state, because our, our Everybody knows the whole geography of who covers what is is interesting always um, upstate. And so for us, our three county service area is technically Jefferson, Lewis, and Oswego counties. But we get, we help people from other counties on occasion. Um, we help out when there's issues. And also sometimes people just know one of us, let's say from St. Lawrence or Onondaga County. So it's not strict, but those tend to be our, our areas. Um, Right now, of course, we are all working from home. We all have computers with uh, cameras. We can do uh, Zoom sessions or Skype sessions to help you out. You can email us stuff. Uh, we all have the ability to print and scan and um, we all have either burner phones or our personal cell phones that we're using. So we are able to discuss any of these questions with you, whether you qualify, whether you should, um, as well as helping you with projections or potential other stuff. We do other stuff too, not just COVID-19 related. We can help you with marketing plans. We can help you try and craft a job description. Um, basically anything that it would take to start up and run a small business. Great, thanks so much, Liz. And please, those of you that are on the call, reach out. Um, as Liz mentioned, there are a local resource available to help with these, um, these situations in particular and um, with other business needs as well. You can always reach out to our team at the Greater Watertown North Country Chamber of Commerce. We're here and available and having conversations on an almost daily basis with uh, you know, representatives from organizations 
at the local, regional, state, and federal level on different programs that we uh, have available um, to businesses, um, and we are available to talk to you about those. So please reach out to us. Uh, we are all also working remotely, um, but our team is ready to, to help you out. Um, you can send us emails, get a hold of us um, through our phone number, 315-788-4400, um, and we can help you find answers to the questions that you have. Uh, so at this point um, in the program, I think we will move on uh, to our question and answer um, session. Again, you can submit those questions right in the Zoom chat feature for those that are joining on either a, a cell phone or mobile phone or computer. Um, you can type that right in and I will um, ask the questions and have the appropriate answers um, come from our guests. So we will start out. Um, the first question um, is from a lender uh, that we have locally and has processed a number of the PPP applications with many loan authorizations in hand. Uh, they've had some difficulty in getting a question addressed on some of the guidance that was provided and would like to know if there is a time frame for when the funds have to be dispersed once authorization is issued. The authorization only says that the loan must be dispersed no later than 12 months from the date of authorization. Does this mean that if there's an authorization in hand from uh, someone who would like to open once social distancing rules are relaxed and non-essential businesses can get back in place, uh, can we hold off on the disbursement of funds until it makes better fiscal sense for that business? I think that's for you. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, <laughs> um, that's a that's a great question. Um, so some of the 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 uh, I I think as the congresswoman indicated, you know, some of the rules and you know nuanced procedural guidance is still forthcoming. Um, and um, you know, this was something that normally a process that would take you know six to twelve months to spin up a program and, and write the rules. They uh, you know they had six days. Um, so that is definitely one of the things that I understand that they're uh, working on to provide an update. It will not be 12 months. Um, that is not consistent with the, um, I think clearly consistent with um, the um, purpose of, you know, getting folks uh, rehired um, as soon as possible. Um, so I would encourage you to, to reach out to um, our office and, um, and so we can get, if you happen to not be on our uh, distribution list uh, for, for lending, um, reach out to me. Um, I'll, I'll just throw it out there, daniel.rickman at sba.gov, R-I-C-K-M-A-N. Um, and we'll get you on that list as this uh, updated guidance comes out. Um, so I kind of answered it, I hope. And I'll add, Kylie, we have been in touch. This is Congresswoman Stefanik. We have been in touch with Treasury on this issue to really um, get it moving. We anticipate and we're told that guidance would be issued today on this really important clarifying question. Uh, again, for both the lenders, mostly for the lenders, but also the small businesses, as there are these very detailed questions as to some of the in either inconsistencies or what's left out of the guidance, please contact my office because we're working directly with the Deputy Secretary of Treasury to literally help write these in real time. For example, on the seasonal issue, we got them to use our language to update the guidance. But this specific question, will this guidance will be released today. Fantastic, thank you. And I think this is going to continue to be a question, especially with the number of tourism driven uh, businesses we have in our region and those that are deemed non-essential at this point. So I think that's a great question and thank you both for, for providing some insight to that. Uh, our next question, uh, we applied for the EIDL on Tuesday, March 30th and have not had a reply or response since. At the time we applied, it stated we would see the advance and or a response within three days. What is the current status and expected response time? So that's, uh, that's, that's this is Dan. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I certainly appreciate that the, that was another one of those um, uh, clarifying um, uh, thing, or I guess things to be clarified. Um, with respect to the turnaround time, because as you can imagine, there's a massive volume of 
economic injury disaster loan applications, and they do have to be, you know, they do have to be processed. Um, my understanding is um, um, some businesses that got their applications in early um, last week, as it sounds like this this this, uh, this inquiry uh, indicates, they're starting to see these disbursements um, in their uh, checking accounts. So I think what um, um, we're asking is for folks, you know, can, you know, continue to monitor your accounts for those disbursements, and hopefully you'll be able to see them soon. So sometimes with 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 ACHs, it does vary um, when, for example, um, tr the uh, SBA to the Treasury Department they initiate the transaction. Depending on your financial institution, that that can add a little bit more time. You know, with direct deposit, that that can vary a little bit. So, um, so I appreciate the question. Great, thanks. Hopefully we, you know, our businesses in the area can start seeing some of those funds uh, get into the accounts and provide a little bit of relief uh, as we move through this. Uh, so moving on to our next question, um, it has to do specifically with a seasonal business who, um, who that is run by a husband and wife. Uh, they own the business and they are wondering uh, how do we count our employees and are the husband and wife that are also the owners considered employees of that business? That's, a, that's another great question. So um, you have businesses that are, you know, um, where the owners, um, maybe they're not incorporated, maybe it's a partnership or an LLC um, or just a husband and wife team like this, uh, this particular example, and they don't have employees, okay? Um, applications for PPP for those types of individuals are going to open up or scheduled to open up on Friday. Um, one of the pieces of guidance that is still forthcoming is how um, the PPP, how their particular payrolls, uh, how their payroll, in, you know, so, so to speak, uh, will be calculated. Um, in our interim final rule that we posted um, last week for the overall PPP, PP program. Um, one of the examples that was given for uh, companies with employees is just the simply the net earnings of the business. Um, and then further, as the Congresswoman met, woman mentioned, um, for, seasonable, for seasonal businesses, um, we issued updated, uh, there was an updated FAQ that went out um, Monday, I believe, Monday evening, uh, and is now available on our West website at www.sba.gov. Um, that FAQ document specifically addresses the seasonal businesses, and the uh, summary is is to look at the the covered period, which is the current period February fifteenth to um, June thirtieth, and to look at your F two thousand nineteen uh, same period to determine um, uh, what the seasonal payroll would be. Okay. So again, for the specific question about the, the, the um, sole proprietor or, or uh, husband and wife team, um, we'll need a little bit more detail. Hopefully that will come out or it will come out by Friday for the PPP program. With the economic injury disaster loan for, for that scenario, a um, little bit different since that's not paycheck centric. That's just more about your operating expenses. So you know, if we're looking at your gross revenues and your cost of goods sold. Uh, to come up with um, the amount that would be appropriate for the economic injury disaster loan. Okay, great. Uh, and just of, this is relevant, Kylie, to add on to this seasonal. Um, we developed that Q and A that Dan from SBA talked about. Uh, that was language that was developed with businesses in our district. We're also looking for a further clarification, and this would require a technical uh, correction to the law. Uh, right now, as it reads, uh, seasonal businesses have to use average monthly payroll for the period between February 15th, 2019, or March 1st, and June 30th. Um, but we know in our region, many of our seasonal businesses ramp up operations after that February, March. So they don't even have substantial payroll for the month of March. So we are trying to adjust that. Um, so that it takes into consideration seasonal businesses that start their seasons later. Fantastic. And I believe that answers one of the questions that was posed in the group chat as well. So thank you. Um, okay, next, I will do my best to read this one. There's a lot of numbers included, but here we go. 
This is uh, from a client through the Small Business Development Center who was not able to join the call, but they are wondering uh, specifically with the EIDL um, and if your advance payment is $2,000, but then you go ahead and you get a full $25,000 loan. At that point is $10,000 forgiven, including the 2,000 and another 8,000, or is only the initial $2,000 forgiven? The amount that's forgiven is the amount that you were advanced. So if you were eligible for a $2,000 advance, then that was the amount that will be forgiven. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, next up, uh, lenders under PPP are asked for documentation that is not required by the SBA, given the speed that the funds are required to be dispersed. Can SBA contact lenders, uh, can the SBA contact lenders to give them guidance on what information is necessary? So um, th this kind of speaks to how a guaranteed loans work. Um, you know, fundamentally, we did provide that guidance. Um, you know, uh, with the interim final rule, we gave examples of um, what the the minimum requirement would be um, for the bank to process these loans and for that loan to be eligible for you know the hundred percent guarantee that we're that, that we're putting on all these loans. Um, you know certainly banks um, have the ability to um, if they wish to add additional due diligence um, based on you know what they um, uh, they feel is prudent for their institution. Um, you know, I, I would say that um, some of that may become clearer as we, as we issue uh, uh, more nuanced guidance and more procedures for the banks. I would, you know, you can always, I would always encourage any bank to kind of reach out to our office if they have, have questions about this. Um, so perhaps we can um, help them understand the interim final rule a little bit better. Um, but, um, you know, ultimately the, the bank is, is making the loan. Um, so, um, and at this point, some of them are required, may, may be requiring additional due diligence. And we're, we're, we're aware of that. Um, you know, I think it's, it's, uh, becoming, uh, it's, I think it's pretty, uh, widely known that, you know, certain banks that are eligible for PPP, they are putting, um, some, Restrictions, for example, some banks are only uh, accepting PPP applications from their own borrowers um, or um, clients that have um, um, depository relationships, as, as an example. Um, you know, but certainly as more and more banks uh, come on board, I think we would expect, uh, um, expect the um, PPP loans to become generally you know, more available. So. Um, you know, and certainly for any specific, uh, if you have some specific concerns or questions, you can always reach out to our office. Okay, great. Um, this one might apply to a number of individuals that are um, on here. And it's, um, we have both goods and services um, and they have filled out the SBA form and it didn't go through the first time and they filled it out a second time and they haven't heard anything uh, regarding the status of that. And they want to know, is there a way that they can figure out what the status of that application is? Because it wasn't accepted the first time and it did go through the second time, um, understanding that only one application is being accepted. Um, is there any insight that you can provide on how to double check that information? Yeah, so I, I think I can unpack that a little bit and, and give everybody a little bit of background at the same time. Um, I think I, you know, indicated early on that um, there was a different loan application process for the EIDL loans um, uh, prior to the CARES Act. Um, and that loan application process is the same that had been in place for many, many, many years. Um, it did require a lot of documentation. So um, um, part of the CARES Act was... Uh, uh, enhancing that and um, on last Monday um, we launched a streamlined portal that um, um, makes the application process a lot easier so I'm not sure exactly where this this uh, specific you know uh, specifically what happened with, with, with these with this particular question but um, the 
anybody that made an application prior to 3.30, okay, uh, Monday, um, their application is still, you know, available. We did send out instructions for those individuals to um, um, update their application, if you will, by um, going through the new portal, um, which does ask for some additional certification types of questions and crucially adds the advance to the process. And that was tied to your original application. So, um, you know, so for, if there's anybody on the line that, you know, has done both, um, those, those applications are being matched up, okay? Um, and then as I mentioned, um, the, um, uh, for the advanced portion, um, uh, uh, the disbursement will show up in your account, okay? Um, email notifications will go out when the loan itself is processed, is my understanding, okay? Um, now that, you know, subject to any, you know, updates from, from SBA, you know, I'll definitely um, um, make folks aware of that. Um, the economic injury disaster loan itself, you know, can take up to two or three weeks to process, okay? Um, so, you know, it, it does take time to process those EIDL loans. Uh, separately from the advance. So I know that there was kind of a lot in there, but um, generally speaking, if you aren't sure about the status of your application or you're not certain that your application was actually submitted, such as you don't have a confirmation number, okay, um, then I would recommend folks call our uh, Disaster Customer Service Center. Um, the Customer Service Center is the... Um, going to be the, 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 the only way to get a specific status on a loan application um, if you don't have a, um, um, that's the only way to pull it up, I guess, in other words. The customer service number is 800-659-2955. Again, the number is 800-659-2955. And um, I understand that the hold times have come down quite a bit. Um, as SBA has staffed up that call center massively. Okay, great. Um, we have a question here. If we pay employees prior to receiving funds from the PPP, can we count those funds against the PPP once received? Um, that, uh, the answer is no. The um, it clock starts from this loan disbursement. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, there's several other questions here. Um, I've been paying my current employees, even though they're not able to come into work due to that we're not considered essential. 75% of my workforce was already on layoff being a seasonal business. For the PPP, if I lay off the, remain, the remainder of my employees now until they can come back to work, will my loan not qualify for the forgiveness portion so um, again you know we, we can go back to the FAQ uh, Congress mentioned and um, you know potentially some additional updates beyond that but um, you know we're gonna base you know the the calculation needs to be based on you know the similar prior period okay from FY19 as of the current guidance so um, you would really simply look at what your average employment was then um, you know and if the if you're unable to reach that same level of employment, employment or maintain that employment, um, then the amount, again, that would be forgiven would, would be reduced uh, accordingly um, net if you aren't able to uh, keep those employees on board. Now, if you think about it, you know, there's probably going to be a pretty close correlation between, you know, your actual payroll expense. Um, say you only keep 40% of your employees, well, you're probably only going to keep 40% of the funds you're gonna get that 40% still forgiven. You're just gonna have funds left over, okay? So I kind of go back to that example in the scenarios where you have funds left over, um, you know, you would have the option then to either pay off the remaining balance with the remaining funds or um, uh, just make the, the monthly payments over the remainder of the two year term. Um, payments are deferred for six months though, so. Um, your first payment wouldn't kick in for some time. So it, it would amortize over the remainder, uh, the remaining 18 months of the term. 
Okay, thanks. I do want to mention that Kayla Perry from the Chamber Office, office did uh, put the phone number for the SBA call center in the chat. So if anyone has any more questions uh, specifically about their application, uh, she did include that phone number there for those that didn't jot it down. Um, we do have time for a couple more questions. Uh, so yesterday, uh, some information came out from an SBA in Massachusetts that the EIDL grant would now be based on how many employees are listed in the application. For example, one employee would be getting uh, $1,000. Can you clarify, do we get the $10,000 grant as first told or have they moved that, uh, that goalpost and changed the information? I think that's a, that's another great question. So um, I think you know that was another one of these um, uh, parts of the uh, this entire process that uh, could have stood additional to have a little additional clarity. Um, I think it's it's uh, consistently the the um, phrase has been up to ten thousand um, dollars, and I think the the part where it's limited or reduced based on your number of employees is the part that was not. Um, widely understood or, or disseminated. So, um, if you know there there is a there is a limited pot of funds, um, and I, perhaps that was in part why it's, it has consistently set up to. Um, so, but in terms of the calculation, that is my understanding of the calculation. You know, it's reduced below ten employees um, down to the the minimum, which would be one thousand dollars. Okay. Um, we are also seasonal and owner operated with no employees. Uh, Dan, or maybe even Michelle, you could uh, chime in on this one as well. Um, but they are considered essential. Uh, is there anything that they can apply for? Well, they would, they would be el eligible for PPP. Um, this, uh, they are eligible, but they'll be able to apply on um, Friday. That is when they'll be able to apply based on, as we've discussed, um, as well as the economic injury disaster loan. So that, that would be uh, available to them to cover their operating expenses over the next six months. So um, those are gonna be the, the two things from, um, from SBA that they would be eligible for. Kylie, this is Michelle. For, for the North Country Alliance, this is open to any for-profit or not-for-profit business. Um, for-profit can include sole proprietors as well. So if you're interested in the program, I would say give us a call and we can discuss the eligibility requirements with you if there's any questions. Okay, great. And to remind everyone, we do have information about the, the North Country Alliance programs on our website, watertownny.com. Uh, so you can click through that information um, and, and get the contact information and give a call uh, to Michelle or Matt Siver, who are both available uh, to discuss those loan opportunities with you. Kylie, I'd be remiss if I didn't um, point out, I, don't, I, don't, I can't recall if I mentioned it in, in, in my uh, opening comments, but um, um, nonprofit organizations, eligible nonprofit organizations, um, are eligible for both PPP and the EIDL program, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, with, with some exceptions, um, but they're listed on our on our website if they visit, visit www.sba.gov. So that's something something else to keep in mind. Okay, great. Uh, one more question, and then uh, we'll just do some, you know, final remarks. Uh, so my wife and I are sole owners of an S Corp, which did have 25 to 30 full-time equivalent employees. Is our personal payroll included in that total payroll when qualifying for PPP? And also, is it part of the forgiven loan? Um, yes. I'm not going to go through the calculation again. <laughs> um, the, it is part of the eligible payroll costs, um, uh, particularly if they are on the payroll. And actually, you know, um, unlike, I, I guess, full pass-throughs like LLCs or, or partnerships, you know, they're probably getting a, a paycheck from which taxes are being withheld. That part is clearly included and not excluded from the payroll calculation or the forgiveness calculation. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Uh, so I think that... We will end our question at um, our questions at this time, keeping in keeping in mind everyone's very busy schedules right now. I know everyone's 
learning new information and regularly updating. Uh, Dan, do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share? No, I just, you know, um, I would just, if, if, if folks have questions about these things, um, you know, I know there's, it, it's a lot, right? And there's a, a lot of stuff coming at, at from all directions, right? Um, you know, uh, the best sources of information for our programs are going to be our website um, uh, at sba.gov. Um, you know, I, I know it's difficult to, um, it's difficult for us to kind of speak to other people's interpretations about some of these things. Um, but, you know, if, if they have any questions about them, that's what we're here for is to, is to help folks understand them. Um, and definitely, you know, to take advantage of, um, I, I should say, to get a hold of us, you know, wherever you are, um, you can find our um, local assistance at sba.gov slash local hyphen assistance on our website. It's one of the, the main tabs at the top of the website um, where you can find folks like the SBDC um, or our district office, or depending on where you are, our nearest SBA partner that can also um, help guide you through these things. So we are here to help and, and, and um, help you work through this. Great, thanks. Uh, Michelle, do you have anything you'd like to share? No, just that we're uh, happy to be able to help you during these times and that uh, please take advantage of the programs, uh, especially the North Country Alliance's programs, but also all of our public loan programs, whether it's the Development Authority, North Country Alliance, Jefferson County Local Development Corporation or the Watertown Local Development Corporation. Uh, there are public resources available uh, to assist you. Great. Uh, hey, Kylie. Yeah. Hi, Kylie. This is Lori. Uh, Lori Podman from Bowers. Um, I'm going to do the CPA plug here. Um, you know, we've been working with our clients um, to help them figure out what numbers need to go into the calculation to determine their maximum loan amount because um, it's not always, uh, you know, they, they know payroll, but there's also the retirement benefit, the health insurance. Um, so I would encourage anyone to reach out to your accountant um, to help you um, maximize that. Also, it helps with the bank on the lender side um, because all lenders, you know, they're trying to figure this out too um, and it's not consistent or we're not finding it to be consistent. So um, there's my plug for that. So um, that's what we've been doing all week um, is helping our client to make sure they have that information. It's helping the lenders too because we've already organized it for them um, and got it in the format that they need to submit. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's a, a definite resource that is available uh, to the businesses that they may not be thinking. Um, if, you, if you use a particular accounting service, make sure you reach out to them um, and they are likely to know the, this information as well. Uh, Liz, do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share? Yes, um, thanks to everyone. It's been very informative. And if you do have specific questions, give us a try. I see Robin um, Stevenson, who's one of our advisors, just posted our phone number. Um, as soon as I stop yakking, I'm gonna post uh, a link. Really the most expeditious way to get a hold of us during this uh, shutdown while, while New York State is on pause is to request an online advising appointment. We get an automatic email when that happens and uh, I can send that to uh, an advisor and they will be back in touch with you. So far, we have been working really hard and have been able to get in touch with everyone pretty much the same day they call us unless the call comes in you know, or really late or the request comes in late in the afternoon. So um, give us a call, go to our website, uh, request an online appointment and we will help you as best we can. And if there's things we need to research, uh, we can do that. We have. Uh, the abilities to research ourselves and also our Albany Central SPDC office has research librarians. And of course we have Dan, we can always call him. Yes, thank goodness for Dan. Well, thank you. Um, Congresswoman Stefanik, are you still with us and do you have any last final thoughts you'd like to share? Yes, I am, Kylie. Thank you for hosting this. Thank you to the Development Authority of the North Country, North Country sure. Alliance, uh, SDA and SBDC for answering these questions. I want to also uh, encourage any businesses or lenders to reach out to my office as you continue to have these clarifying questions. You can go to stefanic.house.gov 
slash coronavirus, where we have the frequently asked questions, many of them related to the PPP program, but also additional questions as well. We also have the updated application forms for SBA and helpful links. So thank you, Kylie, for the great work that the Chamber is doing to uh, provide this resource for our community. Thank you so much, Congresswoman Stefanik, and we'll continue to be in touch with your office. And if there's anything that we can do uh, for our businesses, we'll certainly continue to try and do that. Um, again, everyone that's on the call, thank you so much for joining. I hope you found the information that we were able to share uh, to be helpful. Again, make sure you're reaching out to any of the resources that are available to you during this challenging and difficult time, including uh, the Greater Watertown North Country Chamber of Commerce, the Small Business Development Centers, local economic development offices, your banking institution, uh, your accountants. We are all in place to help you through this tough time um, and we will do whatever we can to, to get us through to the other side. And I'm confident that together we, we, we can make that happen. So again, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you to our panelists and a special thank you to Congresswoman Stefanik for joining us today. I hope you have a great afternoon. Thanks everyone.